Welcome to this lecture in the data cleaning and pre-processing module of Pandas. In this lesson, we'll focus on handling data types. Ensuring that each column in your dataset has the correct data type is essential for accurate analysis as inconsistent types can lead to errors or unexpected results. Now, why to handle data types? When it comes to data which is loaded from files like our Toyota sales dataset often has incorrect or inconsistent data types. For example, dates may be stored as strings instead of datetime objects. Numerical columns may be incorrectly stored as strings. Columns that should be categorical may not be classified as such. By addressing these issues, you will ensure your dataset is consistent and ready for analysis. Now let's load the Toyota sales dataset and inspect its structure to identify potential data type issues. In this case, I have generated this sample data based on Toyota sales data.csv. Uh, the reason why I am using this sample data instead of directly using Toyota sales data.csv is because I don't have all the scenarios covered in that file. Uh, the data is more or less of good quality. Hence, I have generated some sample data based on that to demonstrate all the scenarios related to data types in Pandas. Now, let me run this first. It is run successfully. I should be able to say df to preview the data. You can see the details. From here, the actual data types are not obvious. Uh, to get the data types, you have to use attribute called as dtypes on top of data frame. In this case, I can say df.dtypes. Now let me run this. You can see the details about all the columns along with data types. If you want, you can also use info. Even info will give data type details, but dtypes is more than enough. That being said, when it comes to sale amount, it is of type string. Strings are typically represented as object. That's why you are seeing object here. If you actually look at the data, if you go to sale amount, the sale amounts are represented as strings here. Hence, when it comes to data type here, it is saying object for sale amount, which means it is nothing but string. That being said, we have used dtypes attribute. The dtypes attribute shows the data type of each column. Uh, for example, you can see sale amount is shown as string. It should be numerical value. When it comes to sale date, even sale date is of type string. It should be of date time object. Now let's fix the data types for the sale date and sale amount columns to ensure they are consistent and accurate. For that, I should be able to say df then sale date equal to pd dot to underscore date time df sale underscore date. In this case, when it comes to sale dates, even though they are of type string, the format is as per the expectations. You can see the format. It is four digit year, then hyphen, then two digit month, then hyphen, then two digit day within the month. It is in a right format. Hence, we don't need to specify the format. We just have to pass the sale date and it will convert to date time when we use two underscore date time of pandas. Now let me run this. Let me also say df sale amount. In this case, I wanted to convert sale amount to numeric type. Hence, I should be able to say pd dot two underscore numeric then df sale underscore amount. Now let me run this. Now let me say df dot d types. You can see the outcome here. Sale date is of type date time. When it comes to sale amount, it is of type integer 64. Here, the pd dot two underscore date time function converts strings to date time objects, allowing for easier filtering and sorting by date. When it comes to pd dot two numeric function, it ensures that numerical values are correctly stored as integers or floats. Now let's also see how to handle categorical data. When it comes to columns like car model and car status, they are better represented as categorical data. It reduces memory usage and improves performance for operations like filtering or grouping. Now, let's first preview the data by saying df. You can see car model here and also you can see sales status. Instead of using just these four records, let me pick the data from the file and then I'll take it forward. So in this case, I'm saying Toyota underscore data equal to pd dot read underscore csv then data car underscore sales then toyota underscore sales data dot csv now 
let's check this data frame you can see the details here we have sale id sale rep id sale date blah 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 let's check the data types let me say toyota underscore data dot d types you can check uh, sale date is of type object sale amount is represented correctly here we only need to ensure sale date is represented as date for that purpose we can say toyota data then sale date equal to pd dot to underscore date time then uh, toyota underscore data sale date now let's preview the data here or preview the data types here you can see sale date is converted to date time now let's change car model and sales status to categorical fields when it comes to car model and sales status they have very few uh, unique values hence we should be able to convert them to categorical fields in this case i can say df then car model equal to df of car model here you can use a function called as as type you can say category in the similar fashion you can also say df sorry here it should not be df let me say toyota underscore data because i wanted to demonstrate using our data from the file not the sample data now uh, car model is converted to categorical in the same manner let me say toyota data then sale underscore status then toyota underscore data sale underscore status as type category let me run this as well now both the cells are run let me check the data types by saying toyota underscore data dot d types you can see the outcome here when it comes to car model it is of type category same is the case with sales status here using as type with category we convert text columns with repeated values into categorical data types which are more efficient for memory and processing if you wanted to get number of unique values from car model or sales status you can use n unique function and then you should be good to go so here you can say toyota underscore data dot n unique uh, when it comes to car model the number of unique values is nothing but six when it comes to sales status the number or count of unique values is nothing but three now let's go through a practical example let's say we wanted to filter and sort sales based on sale date and analyze sales for completed transactions if we use accurate data types the accurate data types make these kind of operations seamless uh, here for completed sales let me define a new variable by name completed underscore sales i should be able to say toyota underscore data then toyota underscore data of sale underscore status then double equal to completed let me first just run this piece of code you can see the outcome out of 5000 transactions only 3543 are in completed status which means the filtering is working as per the expectations now i would like to sort the data by date for that purpose i should be able to say sort underscore values then by equal to sale date if sale date is not of type date the order might not be correct if you are able to convert the sale date to date type then the order will definitely be correct now let me run this you can see the outcome as per the expectations first we are seeing 2024 november first records or transactions then towards the end we are seeing 2024 november 30th transactions in this case we have data only from 2024 november first till 2024 november 30th uh, here filtering and sorting are straightforward because sale underscore status is a categorical type and sale date is a date time object even if sale underscore status is not categorical type still it will work however uh, it might be little bit slow when it comes to the performance when it comes to this lecture here is the recap of the key techniques uh, we have used for handling data types we have to use 
D types to inspect the current data types of columns. We can convert dates using pd dot to date time function for accurate date operations. In the similar manner, we should be able to use pd dot to numeric function to convert numerical values stored as strings. We can also convert repeated text fields such as sales status, car model to categorical data types with as type with category. That being said, in this lecture, you learned how to handle and correct data types in our dataset. In the next lecture, we'll explore filtering and subsetting data to extract meaningful insights. See you there.